want to welcome everyone to our spotlight on the 28th and very excited to be here today with Steve Groff, who is chairman and president of Groff North America. And really excited. Welcome. welcome. Thank you. Glad Thank you're here. You. Um, would love for you to share with the viewers um, what you're here doing. Uh, sure. Really innovative and new industry, and it's right here in York County. Absolutely, we're excited to be part of the growing hemp industry in Pennsylvania. Uh, Pennsylvania was once the largest hemp grow in the United States, a hemp field, Lancaster County, it's known as now. So we're proud to be part of uh, this resurgence. I'm originally a dairy farmer from Lancaster County, so uh, farming is really in my roots. I also spent 20 years in medicine, so I have a unique, uh, vantage point looking at, at hemp and the cannabinoids and, and uh, so we're very excited about really using both parts of the plant as we call it, the fiber part from hemp and also the CBDs and cannabinoids from the plant as well. So we're excited about the business we're creating here and the jobs we're creating and there's quite, a, quite an interest. Well, we're very excited too. So there's a lot going into this business. There's the research and development portion of the business. There's the processing of the hemp yes. as well as the growing of the hemp. That's right. And so can you talk about those three aspects of this business? Sure. We got involved in what we call a vertical where we wanted to really integrate uh, aspects of this business within our business so we could have some control of the supply chain. And we worked very hard last year with about 20 farmers here to grow almost 2,000 acres of fiber hemp. Many, many of those bales are here stored in this right. facility. Uh, we had a great crop. And uh, so we're very fortunate to have their expertise. And now we're developing uh, what we call processing um, lines. And one standing behind me called the hemp train, which is the first of its kind in the world. It's a machine that breaks down the hemp bale and uh, allows for further research and development on uses of the fiber. A lot of people don't realize that the amazing things that can be done with uh, hemp fiber. It's incredibly strong and durable and very renewable. So. There's a lot of exciting things we look to introduce uh, as, we, uh, as we progress here. So 2,000 acres grown predominantly in York County and over in Lancaster County. Correct. Correct. And there were uh, fields of plants that looked like uh, marijuana yes, growing yes. all throughout southern New York County. Yes. A lot of signs posted. Um, I, I drove through the south end of York County and you would see people stopping and taking pictures and um, it was well received, I think, although it was kind of viewed as perhaps an oddity. People hadn't seen fields like that growing. Agree. So what was the feedback from the community on growing fields of, of hemp? I tell you, the, the feedback's been incredible. Uh, I think there's an amazing enthusiasm. I think our state uh, has an opportunity to really become a leader in this industry, despite being behind the Kentuckys and the Oregons of, of, the, of the U.S. The, uh, the farming experience here and the, and the farming base that, that exists can help us build out this industry in Pennsylvania. You need, it starts with a farmer, that's one of our taglines, and right. it starts with a farmer, and it's so true uh, to see this industry really take off. We need buy-in from farming. We think it's a great opportunity to help the, the beaten down ag industry over the last number of years. The, the decline of farm income has been significant and uh, well-documented. And so the dairy farming uh, challenges here mm -hmm. in the state. So we really see hemp as something that can help replace tobacco for a lot of Amish farms. And uh, we've seen a bunch of that this year. And uh, we think it can be a, a fantastic crop here in the state. Uh, but it also will take processing. And that's been one of the biggest challenges in 2019, the first year, but a lot of whip sawing in the, in the market and access to processing has been a challenge. And we're excited to have a fantastic process at the center in, in development here in, in Red Lion, Pennsylvania, right. York County. So. so you've combined two things that we historically have been known for, our agriculture, as well as our manufacturing and processing. Yes. And then you're adding a third component to it, and that is the research and development. Um, and, and clinical, really, and right. having, a, having a, a retail experience where folks can learn about the cannabinoids and CBD oil and understand more about the science behind that. We're doing some very careful research there medically and then also R&D on some of the things here uh, at this processing center. So the House recently held a hearing in the Health Committee yes. on, on the industry 
and talked a lot about regulation or lack of regulation and um, would love to get your opinion on that. My concern, of course, is that we don't over-regulate the industry, that um, we don't constrain you, that we give you the opportunity to grow and thrive. Um, what are your thoughts after that hearing? I was fortunate to testify as an expert both on the medical side and as a stakeholder in the industry. Um, we've been very fortunate to be involved at the Department of Ag level. We're on the Hemp Steering Committee. Um, we want to be involved in helping shape those regulations because as you said, we don't want to see the industry uh, really get squashed before it even gets started with over-regulation. So there's, there's no question CBD and cannabinoids from hemp need to have some regulation. The, the, the federal government has declassified hemp and uh, opened up a lot of opportunity, but there, there is need for standardization and regulation, but we certainly hope that it, it's balanced, that it allows the industry to continue to thrive. So, Senator, we have uh, some of the large hemp bales that were harvested this year. And at first glance, it really looks like hay or straw. But right. uh, as you begin to look at it closer, it really consists of two types of fiber, the thinner, thinner uh, strands, which are known as bass fiber, and incredibly strong. And that can be used in textiles, in concrete reinforcement, and, and a number of other uses. And then some of this other material is called herd, and it has uh, some other unique properties also for concrete, uh, animal bedding, it's antimicrobial, uh, a lot of uh, fascinating uses that can come from this. So, Well this is pretty fascinating. If I was driving uh, down the road and I saw this on the back of a, a flatbed or being pulled around by a tractor, I would probably have no idea that no this doubt. was any different no than what has been harvested for years here in York County. So. Um, it's pretty amazing, but I, I see what you're saying. It's it's like a really... It's coarse and very strong. Yeah. It's not as soft as cotton no. when it's used in textiles, but it's uh, it has other uses. It can be flame retardant. It can be uh, used in military uh, uh, uses as well, military garments, things like that. So we're very excited about the potential. Um, there's a lot of other folks that have grown uh, what we call the other type of hemp, high CBD hemp, and that's right. grown more like uh, orchard style or tobacco style. Okay. Um, that was really 80% of the hemp grown in Pennsylvania, and, and that's for what people know as CBD or cannabinoids, and uh, those products get extracted through a chemical extraction, which we can show you some of the equipment we're going to be using. Um, it's almost a different process than the fiber, so really two okay. distinct processes for hemp. And so you start with it like this to extract the extract the cannabinoids or? Uh, different material. From okay. This would be called the stalks. Okay. And the, the stalks certainly have a lower value, but um, and they need to be processed differently. And this would be what we call the stalk material. Right. The flower is the resinous material from the plant, typically the female plant, that has the high cannabinoids, CBD, and other okay. important minor cannabinoids that have been shown to have health and wellness effects. So you're making use of the entire plant. The entire plant, and really one of our core theses, is thesis, theses uh, would be to use the entire plant, uh, both the fiber side and the, uh, the cannabidor CBD side. There's also seed from this material. Hemp seeds are incredibly nutritious for both human and animal consumption. So okay. more than likely, uh, hemp seeds will be used in, in animal feed in the not too distant future. In fact, there's some uh, companies that are pretty close to approval on that. So it's a tremendous digestible protein, hemp seed. So well, again, that's interesting. Yeah, a lot of folks aren't familiar with that. but So a um, <coughs> little bit of a snafu before planting season. Um, we had to work to get seeds imported from Canada. Yes, yes. And so is Appreciate that going to become, well, I was, I was very happy to, to help out and to um, make sure that those couple thousands of acres, especially here in York County, yes, were, yes. were planted. It really did mean a lot to our farmers. Absolutely. Um, but will you have your own seeds from what was planted here uh, this past year, or will you need to continue to import? Uh, there's there's a number of different options at this point. Uh, okay. There's still importing options. There's some uh, domestic options. The industry is so new. We don't have a um, company or companies that have, I think, in the in the seed world, DeKalb and Pioneer, the corn right. uh, uh, agricultural uh, corn seed. Uh, we don't have those types of companies with long histories of genetics. So those things will be worked out over the next couple of years. 
but uh, th there'll be ample access to, to genetics this year. And the federal government has everything straightened out, we think? Yeah, generally. I would never okay. say <laughs> always, but... Uh, well, at least in this but, respect. Yes, yes. It certainly has improved, but there's still some things that need to be worked out, but yeah. a year's made a, a lot of difference, so... Great news. I'd love to show you uh, some of the equipment we're about to install for our extraction. Over the last several months, we've ordered a lot of very delicate equipment, okay. um, all of which has now arrived. It's going to be installed, uh, a lot of chemistry equipment, extraction equipment. So this would be the other side of the plant where we're um, extracting those resinous compounds. Again, CBD is probably the most common uh, that the folks talk about. Right. And um, I think it's important for everyone to understand that hemp is a cannabis plant. Hemp is cannabis, right. and uh, I know there's a lot of confusion, and we're not in the marijuana business, and we right. don't and want I'm, to be. I'm told that <clears throat> you know, if someone snuck into one of those farmers' fields down in South County and attempted to um, put it into some sort of form to smoke, or they would just have a really horrendous headache. That yeah, it, there's it, no, uh, there's no, there's minimal to zero psychoactive effect. THC is the thing that differentiates marijuana uh, from hemp. The real terminology should be high THC cannabis and low THC cannabis. Hemp is low THC cannabis and really has no psychoactive effect, but certainly has medical effects. And um, we don't want to discount that. We right. have to be careful with claims, and the FDA has been very careful about that, and we th think that's appropriate as well. However, in a state like Pennsylvania, there's medical conditions that are being treated with these compounds, including killing cancer cells in someone's research. So right. there's a lot of reasons to be optimistic about the, the uh, potential human health benefits from very specific use of these cannabinoids, which are the molecules that grow in these plants. We've had those conversations. You know, I was in the General Assembly when we passed the medical marijuana yes. legislation, and it was signed into law. and monitoring it, seeing mm -hmm. uh, the direction that it's going, and um, you know, I think you've made a really good point, and that is the research mm -hmm. into uh, the medical uses Absolutely. of cannabinoids. Yes, from um, both hemp and high THC cannabis marijuana, they're both the same molecules, really, right. and that's what a lot of people don't understand, and so <clears throat> education is a huge component of this in our yes. minds, and <clears throat> we're working very hard. At, um, we hold educational events, <clears throat> excuse me, have been sold out several times, so there's a <clears throat> there's a huge interest in this area, yes. and, and people are looking for natural solutions to some of the things that have been treated before with pharma. Um, so a lot of interest, it, and that's a great thing. Some of this equipment is going to be installed tomorrow. We've got some very delicate distillation equipment, chemical. Okay. Uh, lab testing equipment. We're going to have a quality control lab here. So one of the concerns about some of the cannabinoid and CBD businesses, there's not a lot of regulation right now. And, and so we believe that quality control testing, having uh, things verified are really important. And so we're going to have all that in-house. Uh, we'll have the ability to test our own, own material and be very, very accurate with our, with our uh, ingredients. Yeah, and that I think is really important. I've heard from people that they are trying different brands and have, even staying with the same brand, they're getting inconsistent results. Yes, so yes. to be able to have that assurance that you're going to have a consistent product with consistent results, I think is really important. So we have a uh, PhD chemist that, that's working with us on, on the, the basic science side. Then I've got several physicians who are medical doctors with multiple board certifications that are also working with me in a group to really look at, at and study the, the medical effects at a, at a high level uh, university type level. So we're building out a clinical research team and uh, we're really excited about that as well. That's fantastic, fantastic. And then these rooms are going to house uh, some of the other equipment. It's going to be uh, these two white rooms have special ventilation, and okay. uh, the, the big metal room is actually uh, explosion proof. So we'll be able to do um, some of the chemical extraction there. Okay. And uh, distillation, isolation, these are all, it really comes down to organic chemistry. Uh, so I'm having fun with Dr. Bates, we'll reliving my sophomore college organic chemistry training. Uh, oh my goodness. So he's, he's a brilliant guy. And, I don't uh, remember <laughs> quite as fondly as you do, I think, so. 
I had challenges with other classes, but I did well in organic, luckily. But so th those will be filled uh, with the uh, equipment that just arrived, and we expect to be doing some processing actually next week. So we're excited. This has been a, a lot of work and a long time coming, but we're just getting started here, and we really have the potential to develop a research park that could lead the, the country in research right here in Red Lion, and we've got the foundation for that being built right now. So we're working with the governor's uh, task force and uh, we're creating jobs here. We have 30 new jobs in this facility alone in a year. So, and uh, that's just in the facility. That's not including um, people who have grown the crop. Correct. Those are employees of ours. And the, the, uh, the industry itself has tremendous job creation potential, both at the ag and farm level, right. through processing and sales and distribution. So. Pennsylvania can be a leader, and uh, the Department of Ag took a very aggressive stance in allowing unlimited acreage so of growth, and that's something that was very key to kicking off an industry here in Pennsylvania. So right. I'm right. glad they did that. Well, that's, that's good news. Oftentimes, I will tell you, we don't get it right in government, so to hear that we've done something well is very heartening. Russell uh, Redding uh, deserves some credit there and um, really uh, helped kick things off. So. That's great. So. You're a new industry, you're, you're growing, 30 jobs. Um, what do you think you're, have you envisioned what your, your maximum growth in this facility will be? I, I'm very optimistic that okay. we'll continue to grow our company. We have the chance to have other uh, like-minded companies and complementary companies on this campus to help build out truly a research park. Um, we're, we're very optimistic. We've. Our family and myself, I've taken on some challenges in this community with some large projects. So we've kind of been through some of those things. Right. This is a new industry, a new company in a new industry. So right. it kind of double challenges, but we also see the potential. This is truly global and hemp, hemp truly is a global phenomenon right now. <clears throat> we've made lots of contacts literally around the globe through our experience with this. So um, again, we're very optimistic and bullish about what can happen here. And uh, we see there's a lot of support. So. Wonderful. We hear a lot about, we have a great economy right now, very low unemployment rates. Right. A lot of employers say to me, it's really difficult to find people with the skills that we need. And we've been trying to focus in the General Assembly on um, people who, yes. and the right training to connect them to the employers. Um, how is your workforce? Are well, you finding the people with the skills that you need? We're fortunate in that there's a lot of folks who want to get into this space. It's new, it's exciting, it's uh, a feel good, <laughs> do good type of, you know, we, hemp is good for the planet and good for people. And, right. and that, that sentiment really creates a lot of passion and it brings a lot of talented people to a new company like ours. And, and so we've, we've been very fortunate into bringing great talent to the community want to help kind of rebuild Red Lion economic impact here. So we've been fortunate to kind of buck that trend, um, but that is a challenge throughout the country. But with our industry, it pulls a lot of folks from other, a lot of bright people from other industries that want to change. And so we're, we're pretty lucky in that regard. Well, and your county's a great place to not only live, but, but to work. Absolutely. And our quality of life is very high. So um, it's good to know that the people with the right skills yes. want to come and, yes. and be here. Absolutely. We benefit from that. So, Thank you so much. Thank you. For really coming. enjoyed this, the tour. It was great. It was an honor. I'm so excited to have spent the first spotlight on the 28th with Steve Groff and Groff North America. And if you want to come and check out Red Lion and, and Groff, and most likely you will find Steve over at Windridge Farm where you can enjoy a great meal and a locally crafted beverage. Mm -hmm.